How do I approach is easily a top 5 question I get asked when playing friendlies with new players. It makes sense why though, I mean how else are you supposed to build up damage when you're already 2 stocks down against a toon link shooting arrows, rolling towards the other side of the stage, and teabagging. So let's just answer the question right away. Actually first of all you should know that there's no need for you to approach all the time throughout the whole match. It's way better to be defensive in a lot of situations such as when you have a lead, or when the opponent runs in with lots of messy, easily punishable attacks. A good playstyle that many people use is a bait and punish strategy, which involves little approaching on one player's part. See, a good amount of people who ask me about approaching seem to always want to get in as fast as possible. The problem is that if the opponent knows you're gonna take initiative every single neutral interaction, they'll rarely approach you, you'll be extremely predictable, matches won't be as interesting, and they'll just end up camping even more as a result. And you wanted to learn this stuff to help deal with camping, right? TLDR, it's good to know how to approach, but you should use it as a tool in your arsenal and not your entire play playstyle. Simply rushing in the whole time does not win tournaments. I know it's cool to have a hyper-aggressive playstyle, but even the flashiest of pro players mix up their game to be just a little passive every once in a while. Okay, here's how to actually approach. Step 1. Approach your opponent in real life. In order to start playing neutral and doing the whole spacey things or whatever, you first need to have somebody to fight. So when the TO calls your match, find your opponent, simply walk up to them, fist bump, and play game 1. And that's how to approach. Oh wait, I'm supposed to also show you this stuff in game. Fine, here you go. The first thing I'd recommend is to fake out approaches. This is very powerful and it's something I use in my game plan all the time. Now, what am I talking about? Well, here's an example. See that? With Yoshi, I like to jump towards my opponent and then double jump back with my best in the game air mobility to safely retreat. Now the opponent can always try to punish my landing after the double jump, but there's a reason I ban FD. On the surface, this interaction may seem like it accomplished nothing, as neutral just reset, but it really gave me a lot of information for approaching in the future. Let's take a closer look at what Toon Link did before I retreated. He shielded. Knowing this, I'll prepare to deal with shield the next time I approach. Shields can be beaten by neutral B, spacing a move to bait an out of shield option, or anything else I talked about in my shield pressure guide. Watch it after this video, thanks! See, the fake approach, which was my jump inward, gave me the information that the opponent likes to shield as I go towards them, allowing me to win neutral in a later interaction. Lots of people give the advice of, if you got punished for doing something just treat it as data and avoid it next time, which is 100% true. But doing fake approaches allows you to know what the opponent likes to do without the need to even get hit. And obviously, the opponent can always do something other than shield, such as an aggressive option or an even more defensive choice, but that can simply be punished by whatever tools your character has to counter the enemy's character's tools. Now as you get to higher levels of the game, this tactic won't work as straightforwardly as in the example I just gave. The opponent could call your bluff and attack you during the initial jump in with Corbin Blue, or they deliberately won't shield the next time you approach because they know you think they'll shield. But that's all just stuff you'll learn as you become more literate in the game. Start false approaching now and your advanced understanding of it will only get better. There are lots of ways to fake an approach, such as Fox Trotting, short hopping and drifting back, you can really get creative. Speaking of creativity, here's a creative segue into my next piece of advice. Be sure to mix up your timings for approaches. Many people get punished for rushing in simply because they do it at pretty obvious times always. One example is something you may already do a lot, and that's get off a platform as soon as an opponent finishes hitting your shield. Valor, an inkling from my region, bases a good part of his playstyle on beating this habit alone, which is good on him since it's common for so many players. With that in mind, if your skilled Roy rushes in with a short hop nair after precisely three foxtrots every single time, that may be why your approaches never work. Try mixing it up with, I don't know, an empty jump and then short hop nairing to throw the opponent off. Or whatever you want to use to just be less predictable, that's just a random idea. If you always landing back air into the opponent after a single jump, try doing a double jump to bear next time. Wait. That's tip number three. Wait. Waiting for the right moment is crucial when approaching. Let's take a look at cornered Corin over here. She's not in a very good position because the corner sucks, so she puts up her shield in anticipation of something. Now, what will you do to beat her in this situation? Take three seconds to think about it. If you answered grab, then you're a frickin' idiot! JK, but grabbing's usually not gonna work out at a higher level, the only exception being if Corrin's at high percent and your throws won't kill yet. Why won't this work? Because it's the oldest trick in the book. Grab beats shield, so naturally everyone will try to do it. Problem is that this also results in every opponent knowing to avoid a grab. There are two phases when someone shields in a corner like this. The first is when they sit in their little bubble for a few moments, and the second is when they do something out of shield. Usually at a time and with an option that they think will be the 
safest. The thing people usually choose is jump, but it can also be a roll, dash, or if the opponent is super big brain, they might hold shield for just a little bit longer than everyone else. This is all assuming you don't pressure their shield and condition them to do something like shield grab, but I digress. The timing for getting out of shield is pretty similar from player to player, so if this works for you on one person, it just might on someone else. I recommend only doing an instant grab if you know for a fact that the opponent is not letting go of that trigger button, perhaps because they know you'll be scouting something else. Here's another way to approach, delay, delay, attack. An aggressive principle I learned in Ultimate due to pretty much every top Utah player using it is what I call delay, de or you just heard it. Here's what this looks like. See, what happened there was conditioning that occurred within only a few seconds. The Inkling did a safe back air, another safe back air, and knowing that the opponent would expect to be safe during Inkling's jump, he forward tilted to deliberately cover this false sense of security. This is pretty simple, but also super effective in terms of winning neutral through approaches. You may only get one hit from this, but it will put you an advantage and set you up for more hits assuming you play your cards right. Most characters should be able to delay delay attack with their own movesets, just maybe with slight variations of which moves to use. Oh, and you don't have to specifically do two landing bears in an F-tilt, in fact I encourage mixing it up. You can do one back air into a tomahawk, three back airs into something, or better yet, adapt to what the opponent does to get out of the situation and punish that. Speaking of tomahawks, you should tomahawk. Don't know what that is. Well, it's an empty landing into grab, a way to beat players who expect landing aerials. This is super helpful for getting in on people who are a bit too shield happy, which is a lot of players. I'll have a full video on this topic soon, so stay tuned for that. But in general, Roll, make sure you land with grab when you're convinced the opponent will definitely shield, such as after they whiff something and you're already in the air about to punish them. As good as tomahawks can be, they must be used in moderation due to them being extremely easy to stuff out. That is, of course, unless the opponent never adapts to you doing them. Lastly, you want to make sure your approaches are relatively safe most of the time. I know that Dark Pit doesn't have many approach options besides dash attack and dash grab, but try to only throw out one of these when you know for a fact that the opponent will most likely get hit by the them. Usually, you'll want to be running in with safe moves that are hard to punish unless they're deliberately scouted. Moves like Palutena's Nair, Mario's back air, and Pichu's back air usually require the opponent to punish what you do after the move instead of the move itself. Cross-ups and shield grab baiting moves are also things I will always recommend. And that, my friends, is it. Knowing how to approach is an important skill in Smash for many reasons, but like I said in the beginning, try to use it in moderation. Or better yet, what if you were able to force the opponent to approach so you wouldn't even have to do much work and have a cruise in time winning the match. Find out eventually by smashing like and smashing subscribe. Get it? Cause this is a smash channel. Smash like? More like smash Ike!